Diva Fundamentals. Today we're taking a look at Diva. We're going to be going into the fundamentals of how to make a sound like this one. This is geared towards beginners and if you're used to using digital synths, Diva is a little bit of a mind game because it's not really made to be digital in any way. It is a digital synthesizer but it's very much analog mindset so we're going to be going over this very simple sound to set up but it's very very useful you'll hear this used as leads all over the place serves great as a bass sound serves great as a lead sound uh some of my favorite leads if you're familiar with the producer uh, stefan walking you can go check out their work uh a lot of their stuff i swear it sounds like it comes straight out of diva i don't know for sure though how they make their stuff so let's go let's dive right in so the core sound, let's, let's get to a common starting point to begin. So we're going to go over to presets. And then in presets, you'll have this template option along with a bunch of preset options. We're going to go with the mini mono. And so just click that. Let me, let me go off one and two it just so I know that it changed. And so you'll be given this as your starting point. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this starting point and begin to shape it. Uh, first off, we need to consider what kind of oscillator we're going to use. And there's a bunch of options in here. But the one that I really like to use is the dual VCO eco. And it's a bit ironic because we're going to use like the least economically CPU friendly filter. <laughs> but uh, I really like this just because it's really simple and straightforward. So we've got two oscillators here and we've got volume controls for each one. And so we can choose our waveforms. We're going to go with the sawtooth for oscillator one. When we're using the sawtooth, the pulse width is not going to do anything. So it does nothing. Not very exciting there. Um, and then we've also got the octave control. So we're going to leave this at eight for now, but we could come back, of course, and change this. And then for oscillator number two, we're given a detune control. So if we bring its volume up a little, well, let's bring it up a fair chunk. And then we give it a little bit of detune. You get those lovely detune sounds. We're going to double click or is it control click? Control click to reset it. And I'm going to bring it down an octave. Now, depending on the range that you're playing, you may want to move this control. We're going to use this as our as our low end. This is going to be sort of the beef to it. So if you're using 32, it's going to sound quite... Uh, I was going to say janky or chunky. It's going to sound kind of crazy when you start playing real low notes. So if you intend to play low notes because it's a bass kind of sound that you're going for, then you might want to make this a bit higher. It'll work better down there. But if you're playing like high notes and treating it as a lead, it's a bit different of a story. You might be, this might actually be desirable. You get a very different tone. So I'm going to settle on 16. I like the sound that it has for the range that I'm playing. And I'm also going to dial this back. This does not need to be all that loud. So if we take this away. You see just a touch. It just takes a hair. It's almost mind blowing how little the knob has to move for it to have a dramatic impact. And it's just a volume control. It's just it's a very, very touchy volume control or sensitive in a good way. So now that we've got our bass sound set up, we're going to move over to the filters. Now, of course, we have two filters. We've got our, you know, our regular filter. And then we've also got this high pass filter here. So right now it's just on feedback, but there's these different modes. And we're going to go with the bite option. So what the bite option is, is it's this residency filter that can move around. So for example, I'm just going to move the cutoff here so we can hear it and then move the peak manually. So see how that works as our uh, with a really aggressive peak, we get these really awesome, you know, super high resonance sounds. So what we're going to do is it'd be nice if we could automate this. We'll find a spot for the cutoff to sort of live. And this is where that peak resonance is going to move around. So in peak, you see there's a modulation option. So we could drive this with something. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to come in here and I'm going to choose envelope number two. And in envelope number two, it's right down here. We have some options. So we're going to bring the attack up just a hair so that this will cause it to move a little bit at the beginning. And 
we need to give this some depth. So I was moving this and I'm like, I'm not hearing anything. It's because we haven't given it any modulation depth. So if you look down here, this is our modulation depth for envelope two. We're gonna go ahead and turn that up. Sort of dial it into place and maybe dial this back a little. Right around there and now what you can do is you can dial in sort of how tight this is with the attack so if you want a really tight attack or something that's a little more laid back these are always the things that it's such a general sound but i feel like stefan walking is just capitalized on this this style of sound uh so anyways we could dial in our attack, get sort of a, a different type of rhythm so that when you're playing, it's going to give a very different vibe. So with that, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to dial the range of the modulation in a bit. And then finally, we have a revision area. So this revision, there's two versions of this high pass filter. And we can just check out the other one. This one is like, just like crazy. So just hear it. <laughs> yeah so you're gonna have to it's not something you can just easily switch you're gonna have to decide which one you want to go for and and tune it again so for this one right we might dial the peak way back and you get a much clearer resonance uh, uh moving around like there's a very specific frequency we can easily pick out so for this reason for these particular types of uh bases and leads i typically like Number one, more revision one. Dial this back in and maybe move this up a bit. And then finally, I already said finally. So that's that's the base of the sound. This is this is pretty much it. But you know, some final post things. I often like to come over to the filter over here and just dial this back some. Just get it a little bit more in range of what I want. And from there, you can mess with, you know, different tones and timbres and textures. So we might try out different octaves here. We might try out a smidge of detune, just a hair. We might try bringing this up a bit. I'm going to go ahead and reset the detune. I'm not vibing the detune. We'll keep the lower octave. We could try an even lower one. Stuff like that. But that is the basics of creating a bite lead sound. I forgot the exact name I gave it at the beginning, but it's very, very common filter chain. From here, you can do all kinds of cool things with sequencing. You've got a very useful musical sound. You can switch out oscillators, but the general core is we set up an envelope with this bite filter and you get a really, really just flexible sound. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.